Hey there, girl travelers, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be exploring San Marino. So, it's around seven o'clock right now in the morning, and I am off to San Marino, which is kind of like a little country, which is in Italy, but still a separate of its own. It's about an hour away. We're gonna get to the train station. Being an independent country surrounded by Italy, the Republic of San Marino is a unique but small country located a half an hour from the coastal city of Rimini. San Marino uses the Euro and speaks both Italian and San Marinese, but they are proudly their own culture and country. This mini tower here is the Busco San Francesco and it's just kind of like literally the gate to San Marino. You'll see outside there, there is a guard and he's guiding traffic. It's around 10.30 right now and I'm meeting a guide at 11 o'clock to kind of get an overview of this country. I keep wanting to say it's a city, but it's actually a country. It's like one hour away from Bologna and you've already set foot into a different country. Okay, so here I am at the tourism board. I have my passport. I'm gonna get a stamp from San Marino in it. Let's go inside. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's the stamp. Oh, and it's like lovely. Look at that. Sparkly, sparkly. Wow, there's some kind of procession going on. It looked like there were a lot of dignitaries. Wow, this is it. This is. This is kind of like. You know, like the prince's diaries. So I just learned something really incredible. Today is a, is a public holiday for San Marino and that's because they have a new president or they're initiating a new president. New president is a woman and a man. Not only that, every six months they have a new president. Which means that if you get a president that you don't like, no problem. In six months, next one. Kind of wish my country would do that. Okay, so these are the presidential cars. Um, two cars right here. They're both presidential cars belonging to the two presidents. You've got, I guess, President 1 there, President 2. The thing to note is that San Marino in the past has had at least 20 women or female presidents. Their way of doing this government has been since the 13th century. This is an age-old tradition built around equality and making sure that no president comes into full power and uses it, I guess, unwisely, and that the democracy remains a democracy. This is the parliament building, otherwise known as the Palace of the People. Everyone's congregated here because of the inauguration festival. We're outside the main cathedral of San Marino. It is dedicated to the Saint Marino, who is the founder of this entire country. San Marino happens to be the third smallest country in Europe, next to the Vatican City and Monaco. Just a little interesting trivia right there. There's another thing that I'm learning right now. For a peaceful country, there sure are a whole lot of firing arms and deadly, deadly weapons. Look at this. <laughs> Avengers. So right here you have a area uh, for the tradition of crossbow. So those are the two cannons that they're shooting from today for the inauguration. Hopefully while I'm up there, they won't go off because those were loud. It was like louder than fireworks. Wow. 
That's the cannon. I'm at the Guaita Tower. To get in, admission is four, four and a half euro for a single ticket. If you want to get a multi-pass, which I highly su suggest because then you can see a lot of different sites, that would be 10.50 euro. So now we're going to explore this Guaita Tower. This is, um, it used to be a prison. Um, I'm not sure if we can get inside. Let's see. Tiny little hole. That path right there is called the witch. And after this, let's go up there. That's the second tower right there. Look at the cliff drops. San Marino has three towers and the reason why they're important is due to history and the fact that San Marino wanted to keep its independence and so being tucked away here on this hill surrounded by different regions they want to stand guard and be protected against invaders coming in to their beautiful country and taking it away from them. It's said that on a clear day you can see across the ocean into Croatia. Today is a good day but maybe not that good. This hill with all the buildings and the tower and whatnot is not the country of San Marino. It is just a part of San Marino. The rest of the country is down there. You must never call San Marino people Italian. They may speak Italian, they may have the dialect of Emilia Romagna area, but they are considered Sim Samaranese. There's a lot of like Japanese swords, you got medieval icons and weaponry. On the outside it looks pretty intense because you'll find a lot of these weaponry shops but apparently these weapons, aside from the swords, the guns tend to shoot blanks I heard or shoot air. So it's kind of like a quirky sense of uh, shopping inspiration that you'll find here. Wow, it's a lot of uphill. So when you go into the head of this mini castle, I want to say, there's a museum of weaponry here. It goes all the way downstairs. That's maybe why you see like all the souvenir shops selling weaponry, sort of mimicking this, this museum right here. What's interesting though is that San Marino is known for being a very peaceful country or a very peace-loving country. So it is interesting that they have a museum dedicated to the war weapons of all of Europe. Okay. Fairly long way up to the second tower. It can be a little challenging for some. Along the way you'll get like these little windows into the landscape. It's random windows carved out by nature. Just to note, the first tower actually has, I think, the best view of the surrounding area. Oh. This town can appear, appear very small, but it's actually a lot bigger than you think. I got lost. I actually got lost. Ooh, look at this. This belongs to one of the second presidents. I guess you're allowed to park anywhere if you're the president, but I think this is also part of the parliament building right here behind me. Right now, I'm in Ristorante La Terraza. When in San Marino, you can eat various different things. They're known for their tagliatelle, their tortellini, their tortellone. So today, I ordered some tagliatelle, which is going to be vegetarian. You get the bread basket here. I've never seen a chocolate looking bread like this before. It's not a sourdough. It's, it's actually kind of good. I'm not sure what herb gives gives this bread the color that it has, but it is moist, so I feel like there's olive oil in here. 
This is a chocolate tele. This is pasta fresca, which is fresh pasta with wild vegetables and some kind of fondue. Like, look at that. Look at the steam. The steam is coming off of that. I have been dreaming of tagliatelle ever since I had it the last time at the Lamborghini uh, restaurant. <laughs> Session is coming into this restaurant. Mm. It's not like a cheesy fondue, but it's very creamy. Wild vegetables taste very wild. They're a little kind of like raw. And when I say raw, I don't mean like uncooked. I almost want to say maybe, maybe they're overcooked. But if you've ever had like wild root or vegetables that are found like in forests and whatnot, that's kind of how it tastes. Now the wild herbs, I'll be honest, I'm not really loving it and the noodles are breaking up a little bit but it's still very tasty. Last we have dessert, which is the house gelato. Dig into that right there. Mm -hmm. Can't not love gelato. I want to say it's like a custard taste. But like the little crumbles definitely adds texture to this. I was feeling a little tired today, but already my mood is elevated. And then you've kind of got your museums of oddities. So four euro with the multi-pass card or eight euro as an individual, you can gain access into this museum of torture. This is a torture chamber device. You would enter the sarcophagus and because there are nails, sharp nails, when they close it in on you. Oh, wow. That's sharp. I wonder if these are sharp. Oh, even the big ones are sharp. That's got hurt. It's three floors of pure torture and torture devices. So far, I've seen a museum of torture, I've seen a museum of vampires, um, and I think there's a museum of curiosities here in San Marino. So, if you have the extra time, check one of them out. I'm in the bus parking lot area. Right up there, you will see there's the main gate into San Marino Historical Center. That center where that city is kind of like the home of the governmental seat as well as a place where travelers can come to understand or or learn about San Marino history and culture. Thanks for watching. It's through resourcefulness and viewers like you who keep my channel going. So if you love what I do and want to see me continue creating solo travel videos, why not support me on Patreon? Jump behind the scenes with others for my latest trip updates and reward perks. Then travel safe, smart, and fun, and may the girl be with you.